Scott. Hello and welcome to our guest of the month, Alex Goldsmith, President of the International Blind Bowlers Association. Hello Alex and congratulations on your election. Thank you very much. How is it actually technically possible for a blind person to play bowls? Every blind bowler has his own uh, coach or helper. Basically the, the biggest problem is the distance of the jack, of the white ball. And we've solved this by putting distance markers every two meters from 23 to 35 meters so that a blind bowler can gauge the distance. Uh, also we have a center string running up the middle of the rink which helps the coach orientate the bowler to the right angle. Uh, it's basically done by orientation of the bowler on the mat and distance and uh, they can play to a very high degree of proficiency. Bowls by its nature is uh, probably the only sport which lends itself to being a sport for the blind. The rules for sighted and blind are exactly the same. Uh, it's also a very sociable game because it's the only game that I know where a champion can play with a rookie and on occasions the rookie can even beat the champion. How well is Israel doing internationally? Israel is doing fantastically well. We've just come back from a trip to South Africa where we participated in the uh, World Blind Bowls Championships held in Johannesburg and Israel uh, took second place, silver medal in the overall, and in the process uh, won eight medals. Is lawn bowls for the blind an Olympic sport? Well, bowls was an Olympic sport. Uh, in fact, uh, I had the honor of taking two players from Israel to the uh, Paralympics in Atlanta, and both of them came back with a bronze medal. So how many blind bowlers actually are there? Uh, 50 blind bowlers in Israel and uh, they play at uh, four clubs every once a week. They play four of the clubs in Israel, lend them the greens for a couple of hours. The Tanya Bowling Club have uh, donated one of its bowling greens to an organization called Ofek Leyaladenu, which is uh, parents of blind children. There's some 900 blind children in the Samuta and uh, we have now taken over that one bowling green and it will be the first bowling green in the world for blind children. So you wouldn't say that um, lawn bowls is an old people's game? Well, bowls used to be known as old man's marbles but uh, since then it has changed. In fact today your international bowlers in countries like England probably average around in their late 20s. Uh, the latest additions to our ranks is a chap called Ayal. Uh, at the age of 20 he was uh, blown up in a pigua, in a attack on a bus up north, and uh, unfortunately totally blinded and lost most of his hearing. And uh, he came to us uh, and it's, it's absolutely amazing the difference. We even had to change our coaching methods because of uh, his hearing being so poor of coaching him talking into his right ear from behind him and uh, he in a very short time is incredible he's playing so well and we see him as a future champion but more important than that it's a question of shikum it's a question of rehabilitation here's a person uh, you can imagine a young person like this uh, in that position and now he has something in life to look forward to. He can't wait to come to the Bowling Green and play. The Israel Lawn Bowls Association for the Blind, which you know, I started with some others uh, uh, some 15 years ago, and today is being recognized as a you know, very serious organization. Uh, we've succeeded over the years to get funding from uh, Rashuta Sport, from TOTO, from all sorts of other government organizations and I'm hopeful that with the kids uh, we'll get similar assistance. Uh, in fact with the kids I'm hoping to, we're going to need more money and I'm hoping that we'll be able to raise quite a lot more money because I think that uh, a lot of people will be happy with the idea of supporting a sport for the blind. It's, this is not a charity case. This is enabling blind people to play sport.